Being an artist from a refugee background during COVID has actually prepared me a lot for COVID because I've always just been switching between modes and I've always been exploring the private and the public. And so during lockdown, we were forced to go into the private but we're so desperate to share with the public. And the other thing is like suddenly like all this trauma that I've been carrying around for a long time, suddenly everybody else's trauma during COVID just sort of spilled out as well. So there was this like kind of, not grief, but this collective experience where suddenly other people understand what it feels like to be disconnected from the places that they used to, that they're disconnected from the communities that they used to, that they can't see their loved ones in the way that they could before, that you can't cross the border and go see your family. See your loved ones, see your lover, see whoever. COVID has made us so much more aware that we're not just individuals, we function socially. And how do we make societies fairer for the people who are at greatest risk of being oppressed. Probably one of the things that turns up the most in media is, is this idea of jihad. Like ISIS is having a jihad. Sounds really scary because a lot of people don't know what it means. But you know, jihad, the literal translation of jihad from Arabic is struggle. And you know what I'm hoping is that walking out of here, the only jihad you experience is when you turn to the person next to you and you say, gee, had a really good time tonight. My cultural connection to my art has always been there. It's undeniable. It is, it is what, it is what I am. mean <laughs> <laughs> so when we first came to Australia we didn't have any money and my aunt was already living here so one of the first places we lived was with her in a little cottage out in Abbotsford uh, it only had two bedrooms and so at one point there was eight of us living in this two bedroom flat and we would always have visitors coming and going through there lots of other people people who didn't have any other family and so we became each other's family and as tradition would have it we would call each other aunt and uncle and my playmates became my cousins even though they weren't blood related to me I didn't realize that at the time and so I was about four and I counted everybody that I considered to be my aunt and my uncle and worked out that I had 126 of them. And that horrified me at the time. Even though I knew I was from a big family, I didn't realize there were that many of them. I couldn't help but worry about my poor grandma who was presumably locked in this back room, forced to have a child. After child, after child, Hamid, Huma, Kareem, Abdul, Jabbar, Jasmine, Aladdin, popping out one after one after one. Connecting to culture is really difficult when you're not physically there. Honestly, sometimes I've watched documentaries about Iran and I've had this profound sense of sadness for this culture, for this landscape that I have not and cannot engage with. And it's like a sense of being homesick for a thing that you never had, missing a part of you. And knowing that it's missing, but also knowing that you never had it to begin with. I engage with it by using language in my artwork as a way of remembering that. I think I also engage in, a, in fashion. There's this sort of richness and baroqueness and paisley and I love bringing that into it. And as a visual artist, I find myself adopting more and more of these traditional motifs in my work. But culture is a funny one, isn't it? 
because when I'm in Iran, I'm, I'm foreign to them. And when I'm in Australia, I'm foreign to Australians. So I'm also making my own culture. And there's also the culture I have within the subgroups that I'm part of. Like the queer community, there's culture within that. The arts community, there's culture within that. But you know, it is hard being Muslim, especially after 9-11, ISIS, some other shit that is bad about being Muslim, you know? It's, it's really difficult. There's a lot of misconceptions and preconceptions about what it means to be a Muslim. You know, and people often pull you up and say like, but you don't look like a Muslim. Meaning you don't look like a Muslim I'm used to seeing in the media. You know, you don't act like a Muslim. Which is, you don't act like a Muslim I'm used to hearing about in media. People like me don't get represented. Because there's always a, a narrative to push about, you know, this sort of like dark and insidious and evil side of Islam when it's not really about that. You know, what do Muslims look like? Same question like, what do Catholics look like? You know, what do Buddhists look like? It's not always a stereotypical concept. And Islam's the same. Muslims are the same. You know, a lot of the time it's like, you know, why do I have to answer to, to the question of like, will the real Muslim shady please stand up? Like, what do they look like? What I'm trying to communicate through my artwork is that being alive is actually really, really heavy and really, really beautiful. And it's complicated and it's messy and it's amazing. And that it's a shared experience. I'm trying to reveal what is concealed in ourselves, in the world, in the universe. And I'm trying to not feel so alone. My name is Samone Pour-Shafiri. I work under the name of Samone Porsche. Um, I am an Iranian-born writer, performer, artist, uh, living and working in Melbourne. I often talk about the experience of being part of a diaspora, uh, being a Persian person, being a queer person within my art. It's multi-dimensional. No, fuck that. I hate that word. Ugh.